What's going on folks? Welcome back to my channel. Before we go ahead and get into the video, a few announcements. Number one, at the time of this recording and upload of this video, there is one week left to enter my giveaway for Mars 2 Pro. All you gotta do is go to my Facebook page, make sure you like, make sure you follow, go to the feature tab, link in the description, and just put I want in in the comment section so that way you're automatically entered to win an Elegu Mars 2 Pro shipped directly to you. Uh, the drawing is going to be Saturday, December 31st uh, on Facebook Live. I believe that's the right date. Yeah, that's the right date. It's going to be on Facebook Live. So make sure you do have like notifications or make a note on your calendar or whatever because I will be going live and doing a random raffle. There's going to be three winners. One is the main winner with two more runner-ups. Okay, so uh, all that stuff is going to be explained in the Facebook Live. Just make sure you go down and enter if you're looking to get your hands on a Mars 2 Pro. Number two. My JDF tribute build is going on just fine. I have another video coming out later this week building the chest armor as well as the bicep gauntlet. So if you haven't watched the first two parts of that series, link in the description. Also, you can go right here to watch the latest video where I talk about building the leg parts. And number three, if you want to help support the channel, I do have a Patreon support tier. Three bucks a month really helps out a lot. Or if you're looking to get some high quality STLs, I do that every month too. You can go ahead and subscribe to my Patreon. It really does help bring the channel up to date and as well as keep it as relevant as possible. So anything helps and I do appreciate you guys. All right, on to the video. No one wants to replace any screen on their printer, but after a while, the this, this screen starts to go. Whether you get resin on your LCD screen or you got dead pixels like me, you have to, you have to replace it. Otherwise, what's the point of having a printer? Anycubic is notorious for their serviceability. Now, I'm not saying now. Back in the day when they had their first round of printers, their Photon and their Photon S printers, it was a pain in the ass to get in there, change out your screen, and then put everything back together the way you found it. Nowadays, Anycubic, I guess, sort of kind of figured out the serviceability issue and actually made it easier on their next round of printers, the Photon Mono 4K, Mono X, Mono X 6K, to change the LCD screens to where you don't really have to open up the printer from the bottom and kind of dig around in there and pull out wires and motherboards and all that stuff. It's actually very simple. But unfortunately for me, I had a couple of dead pixels in my LCD screen. So I actually had to go and replace the entire screen. And I can tell you, that was an ordeal. So if you have a Photon or a Photon S and you're looking to change out your screen, this video is gonna help you step by step on what you need to do to actually get that screen back up and running. So please make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share the video. If you have any comments or anything you like to say, hit it up. I try to read all the comments as possible. I'm not a very big YouTube channel, so I read every single comment there is. So there you go. All right, let's get started. So I'm gonna be changing the LCD screen on my Photon S. As you can see, I have a few dead pixels here and a ton of resin on my screen. This needs to come out. I need to put in a new one. Before I did any of that, I looked online to see what the prices were. Now, I just got the regular old LCD screen, which ran me about 30 bucks on Amazon. It was here in two days. But if you really want to go to extra mile, you can actually get a whole upgrade kit that comes with an actual upgraded motherboard from G2 Systems, which that was my original plot to do, but I ended up changing my mind considering that this thing would have taken like a month to get to me and I had a ton of orders to fill on my Etsy shop. So I needed my screen right away and Amazon delivered through it to me in two days. Now, before I move further, unless you are gung-ho on getting that upgrade kit with the motherboard, do not, I repeat, and I can't stress this enough, do not disconnect any of the cables on your motherboard. Just pull out the ribbon cable that is attached to your LCD screen. Why? Because any cubic is also notorious for not only zip tying cables to where there is no slack to pull out the motherboard, but also they glue their connections. So. You need a soldering iron, a heat gun, or something, and you need to be very, very careful on how you disconnect those cables. Also, 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 you need to take a picture so you will remember what connections with where, because the last thing you need is to put everything back together, close it up, and there's a wire cross somewhere. Just my word of advice. If you're going to upgrade it to the, to the new motherboard, take a picture, know where your connections are before you pull that board out and start disconnecting stuff, okay? okay. Okay, 
I actually went ahead and did that, and this is what I'm telling you, don't do it. I actually went ahead and did that because before I ordered the just the plain LCD screen, I pulled out the entire motherboard thinking I needed to disconnect everything so I can put the ribbon cable on there. Didn't need to do that. My mistake. It's a pain in the ass and you'll see what I mean going forward. So I got my new screen. I opened up the bottom. So there's four screws on the, on the feet of the printer. You want to pull those out and pry off the bottom part where you see the, the fan. There's a lot of wires in there. You got your motherboard kind of stashed in the side here. You got your uh, UV lamp right here and you also got an exhaust fan pointing right at you. Like I said, you're going to see a nice little ribbon cable underneath the board. You just need to pop that off and pry off the uh, LCD screen. Use a heat gun because there is glue underneath there that's going to disintegrate that glue. Once the glue is kind of loosened up, you can just kind of get a little thin tool or something, maybe like a knife or something, be very careful. Or not, it's an old screen if you're changing it and just pry it off, you're good to go. Next thing you know, you're gonna have to get your LCD screen and make sure that your tails are already connected. It comes in two parts. You have the main tail coming off of the uh, off of the LCD screen and you also have another like 90 degree tail that connects so that way you can go ahead and connect it to the board. Go ahead, fish that through and just make sure you have like tweezers or something. Nothing too, I guess, aggressive because these ribbon cables are very, very delicate. Something that you can lightly grab and kind of pull through as you're setting your screen down. Of course, before you do set your screen down, be sure that you do lay the glue that comes with the screen onto your platform. And then when you have your ribbon cables all the way through, press that screen down and make sure that the glue does adhere properly. That's very important. Otherwise, you're going to be ripping your screen off of your cables if you ever try to remove your vat at some point. Now that that's done, all you got to do is reconnect your ribbon cable, tighten up the four screws, hit exposure, your screen should work. That's what it was supposed to be like. It wasn't like that for me because I went ahead and disconnected all the cables on the board and then having to pull out my board. And I could tell you, it was not fun putting all that stuff back together. Luckily, I went ahead and took a picture of what all the cables and connections were like and where everything went. So it wasn't that big of a deal. <sighs> the problem was getting all that stuff stuffed back into the printer itself. It was not fun. And I think I sat there for about 20 to 30 minutes trying to stuff everything back in there. And uh, I got really frustrated, especially since you have to make sure that the ribbon cable on your LCD screen is properly attached to the board. Now, if you're taking the board out, feeding the ribbon cable in, it's not going to work. You actually have to put the board in first and then feed the ribbon, the ribbon cable through. Now, it might be easier since there's not all that junk off to the side to feed the ripping cable from your LCD screen in, pull it out, connect it to the back of your board, slide everything back in, and then you're done. No, it doesn't work that way. Nothing's ever simple in this game. You have to do it as backwards because these things are made in China and they write their instructions as backwards, which is why I'm, I'm making this video for you because it's not fun. It was not fun doing it. All jokes aside though, once I got all my ribbon cables together, all my connections back on the board, I was able to push everything back up into the um, printer. I secured both of those four uh, screws, tightened it up, hit the power, hit exposure, everything worked a-okay. Now, there was resin on my screen. Normally, I don't really care about resin being on my screen. I would have just left it alone, but at the end of the day, there was dead pixels, and this is a new screen, so to kind of further avoid the new screen that I had just got getting resin on it, I went ahead and I changed out the FEB sheet on my printer. Really simple process. It's really easy. It takes a little bit of time to do it because I'm wearing gloves, and there is resin that is like gotten in between like the nook and cranny of your vat. So you want to wear gloves doing this, and it's kind of hard to do that because your Allen wrench sometimes gets tangled up in your glove or it gets sticky or something like that. It's very, very annoying, but take your time and do it. If you feel as though you have a hole in your vat and you just change your LCD screen, either get a screen protector, which comes in handy, by the way. Make sure you do have those on tap because it saves you a lot of money when it comes to uh, having to change your screen every time there's resin on it or anything like that. Screen protectors, lifesaver and make sure um, that you have everything secured when you're done changing your vat or your FEP sheet. So 
that's the whole process. Such a pain in the ass. Like I said, don't disconnect any of your cables. Just make sure you just do what you gotta do and go from there. Everything works fine. My Photon is working just as, just as it did when it came out of the box. So I hope that everyone did find some use in this video. Really quick video. Um, I wanted to kind of get something out before the, you know, during the holidays, I've been busy. So special thanks to my Patreon members who are over here. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. 2023 is gonna be an awesome year and I got a lot of high quality STLs coming your way beginning in January. So if you are 3D printing enthusiasts like I am and you wanna get some high quality STLs, go ahead and subscribe to my Patreon links in the description and I will see you guys next time on my channel. I just got my hands on two new printers. I got my Anchormate M5, which is actually going right now, and I just got my hands on a Photon M3. Both of those unboxing videos are coming soon, so be sure you are subscribed to my channel, as well as liking my Facebook page because you'll be the first to know whenever I upload a video or hit the notification bell. However you get your videos, hey, subscribe, let me know. I'm here for you guys, and I will see you guys next time on another video. Take care of yourselves, and happy holidays, happy new year, folks. Adios.